Coinbase halting withdrawals, stocks plummeting in price. I mean, this market's getting a little bit out of hand, but I want to bring you the cryptocurrency news, stock market news, and anything I think is interesting or can potentially make you money. That's what we're doing in this video today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Alexander Lorenzo. I'm an internet entrepreneur. I talk about cryptocurrency investing in general and entrepreneurship. And today I wanna dive into some of the news, okay? I wanna give it to you from the lens of somebody that's been doing this for a very long time. I've been in finance for a very long time. I've made millions of dollars investing in cryptocurrency and I've made millions of dollars building businesses. So I could show you a different perspective of what's going on in sentiment analysis, which I personally believe might be one of the most important areas for a business owner and an investor, okay? I even think it's more important than technical analysis to a certain extent, but I also do technical analysis, so you'll get the 360 scoop on this channel. If you could do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Of course, turn on the push notification bell. There's a little bell. If you turn that on, the notifications get sent directly to your phone. If you have the YouTube app on your phone, and you have notifications on the YouTube app and then you turn on the bell, well, you get the videos very quick. And of course, some of these videos are time sensitive. You can make money, lose money. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. You get the gist, but I wanna dive into the market. Hey guys, before we jump into the video, I just wanna update you really quickly. There are hundreds of people impersonating me. They have made a business model out of it. These guys are making new accounts at will. They will copy my posts. They will copy my avatar. They are going to copy and paste everything about my life to convince you that they are me. You guys know the only thing I sell is the fundamentalsecrets.com, my digital course. So if you apply there, then yes, somebody will reach out. Other than that, guys, it's a scammer. Don't let them take your money. First things first, we are doing a sale on Fundamental Secrets. So if you guys didn't know, I'm the owner of Coinpix.io, Fundamental Secrets, and Coinpix Capital. Uh, Fundamental Secrets specifically right now is my premier product. We do everything, cash flow, how to make money in any market condition, in the recession, et cetera, et cetera. We actually do it. We actually have testimonials. We actually have hedge fund quality investors as coaches teaching you exactly what they do with their strategy right now it's on discount all you have to do is come over here click apply now and then one of my coaches will reach out to you and show you what the deal is and show you what we're working with here but let's jump in to the topic of discussion today first things first we have an analyst from Mazari basically saying crypto may have hit the ultimate bottom months ago analyst says and this is from Mazari and I'm gonna say blatantly we have not hit a bottom yet let me say it again we have not hit a bottom yet. We will drop further. Honestly, I'm baffled that he would come out here publicly and say this. I don't know why he's saying this. I do believe that the market will drop one more leg down, whether it happens now, whether it happens seven months from now, it will happen. And the reason I say this is because the Bitcoin having event is just way too far away. It's supposed to happen in 2024. And if you look at the history of all cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin halving is the most significant event for price appreciation out of any asset class in cryptocurrency. It does not matter if it's DeFi. It does not matter if it's NFTs. It does not matter if it's the metaverse. This is how it works. And for anyone to say otherwise, you have to have some evidence. I don't really see too much evidence here, but he basically says we may have hit the ultimate bottom months ago because of the cascading liquidations. Maybe, you know, we did experience that. Do I think it can be worse? Yes, I think it can be much worse. Um, he basically says, the market is down to the true believers at this point. Most of the sellers seem to have left. Now, I do believe that's probably correct, but I don't think people are that scared yet. Um, you know, from my experience in being in uh, multiple bear markets in the cryptocurrency space, not only does it have to be the true believers, it has to be like the true, true believers, the one that are willing to like lose all of their money. Okay. The ones that are willing to like sacrifice everything for cryptocurrency. That's where I need to see it. And, and, and I'm not like, a, a, you know, a negative person. I'm not a pessimist, but from what I've, I've experienced, okay, the market needs to get scary. Right now it's bad. Right now it's bad, but it's not scary. It's not like, you know, we're about to lose everything, uh, uh, sell, panic sell. We need to see even more cascading liquidations in my personal opinion. And again, I'm not a pessimist. I'm just telling you guys what I experienced in last bear runs. And with this hawkish Fed policy and what's going on in the world, I don't think it's really adding any positivity to this market at all. I don't know why he thinks that this one variable of the cascading liquidations marks it at the bottom. We can rewind this video three, four months from now, and we'll see if I'm correct. But I think that's a very weak argument. 
And I don't know if there's more to this argument. This is all I'm seeing in the article. Um, but this kind of shows you mainstream media. I told you the proposition of these news videos. I'm going to show you from the lens of somebody that's actually trying to make money off of this. Okay. So personally, I'm putting in shorts. I like seeing articles like this because I'm going to trade the exact opposite way. I don't believe it's time for the bottom in any way, shape, or form. If we come to the next article, uh, the SEC must turn over emails about Ethereum, but it won't help Ripple, lawyers say. So obviously, you guys know the SEC is in a big lawsuit with Ripple. Uh, they're trying to classify it uh, as a security. Uh, they've been going back and forth for I don't even know how long. I haven't really kept up with it. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't like speculate if, the, if Ripple is going to win. If I were to guess, I would say, yes, Ripple is eventually going to win and maybe the price will appreciate after it wins. Uh, but they're trying to get uh, emails from the SEC. So as you can see here on Thursday, a federal district judge overruled the SEC's repeated attempts to prevent Ripple from accessing internal SEC emails pertaining to a key speech on the regulatory status of competing cryptocurrency Ethereum. Ripple believes the emails will help in this case and shed light on the ways in which the SEC has picked two winners in the cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin and Ethereum, while shunning the rest. Now, there's one thing I will say, you know, I, I don't really invest in XRP. Uh, maybe I will if they win. Uh, but there's one thing I will say for a fact is that if XRP wins, it's actually going to be a really good thing for other cryptocurrencies because I do agree to a certain extent. It's almost like they pick the winners, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, you know, when it comes to being classified as security or not. And there's a lot of other coins out there that are decentralized that I don't think are securities. Again, this is, you know, he said, she said, everything uh, will come after the ruling of this investigation, uh, of this uh, trial here. So, you know, it's good to keep up with it and see what's going on. But again, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not going to pretend like I am like a lot of people on the internet just to get views. If we come over here in this article, a Legendary Google billionaire is backing a radical Bitcoin and Ethereum rival despite huge $2 trillion crypto price crash. Now, this blows my mind. Again, they'll do anything to pump the price of cryptocurrency. This is not the time to buy anything, but we're going to get articles like this. Former Google chief executive, okay, billionaire, uh, basically said Chainlink, previously a top 10 cryptocurrency that soared through 2020, has better technology and scales better than other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Although this might be true, guys, uh, Chainlink's not decentralized. Like, there's just so many issues with Chainlink. It's an oracle. Look, I'm not one to comment on, you know, what's going to win perfectly next cycle. I will say it's probably going to appreciate by more percentages than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Like, I'm the money guy. I'm trying to make money, right? So I don't know what's going to win by a technology standpoint. I don't know what's going to be the final layer one or if Chainlink is going to migrate over to a layer one. I, I don't know. But I will say that it will probably appreciate by more percentages. I was in Chainlink early, by the way. I made a lot of money off of Chainlink. A lot of money. A, a long time ago. I think it was 2019 I got into Chainlink. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make is the timing of this article, it, it just blows my mind. It really blows my mind. Because it's so irrelevant, it's unbelievable, okay? Like, it literally, there's literally no reason. This is a paid article. This is, this is trying to distract people. This is trying to say that a billionaire wants to buy Chainlink, basically, and that you should buy it too. That's, that's, what, that's the current state of, of what's going on in cryptocurrency. The, these all-out weird PR uh, press releases, the, these articles being paid for to try to pump the price of coins so they can get exit liquidity. Okay, although Chainlink is a great coin and everybody already knows about it, basically, you know, um, you know, I don't think it's a good time to buy right now. I don't think any altcoin is a good time to buy right now. I think we have a long period of time before the next bull run. Uh, it could be a year, it could be two years. Okay, so don't be exit liquidity. Read between the lines, okay? These things are paid for in a lot of cases. If they're not paid for, there's an interest in the background. There's, there's something, there's some type of uh, a benefit that this person's getting for saying this in a public press release. OK, don't get swindled. This is obvious. OK, just understand what's going on from a deeper perspective, please, guys. All right. Ethereum merge spikes block creation with a faster average block time. Actually, this was pretty interesting. Uh, this may actually be something worth looking at. Um, Complementing this move, the average block time, the time it takes for miners or validators within a network to verify transactions for Ethereum dropped over 13 percent as evidenced by data from wide charts. So we did have a 13% drop in block times. That's pretty straight. I'm not going to lie to you. Does that benefit anybody in the bear run? Not really, because the block times are already pretty quick, right? The only time uh, block times are an issue is in the bull run. When everybody's trying to buy an NFT, 
uh, and the gas fees are ridiculous, right? And by the way, uh, the merge didn't solve gas fees. Down the road, they're going to solve gas fees, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I'm going to say that with a grain of salt. But, you know, it didn't really solve uh, the fees, which is the most important part of my personal opinion. Ethereum wasn't that bad. It only gets bad when there's like these all out hype events in the bull run. There's only like a minority of time where block time is an issue. Right. But this is cool. I guess, you know, uh, you know, we have an immediate effect of a 13 percent uh, increase in speed. That, that's pretty good. I hope it gets way better than that. I hope it gets way, way better than that. And I hope the fees go down. I hope that's 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 what I'm really looking for with Ethereum. Again, just another article just trying to promote something that doesn't really matter too much. I also saw this article here by Coindesk. Where in the world are the best universities for blockchain 2022? I did want to know uh, where this was, and I thought it was interesting. The best university for blockchain are in Asia and the Pacific Islands. It doesn't really surprised me. Uh, they are going under uh, hyperinflation issues in a lot of cases. Their dollar is devalued to a high degree and they have less regulation. So I do see this being a thing. I do see it being a thing in, in El Salvador and, and other third world countries. Usually what happens is the very, the very rich countries get, they get lazy. It's as simple as that. The very rich countries get lazy and the ones that are poor have to adapt quick. It's the same thing with businesses. The biggest businesses usually adapt the slowest, okay? The smaller businesses adapt very quick. So essentially, I, I can see that being a thing. Um, and it would be great if they can, you know, integrate some of that into the United States. I do believe there's an online course that you guys could reference that actually changed my life. Um, if you're new to cryptocurrency, highly recommend it. If you just simply search blockchain MIT, there's an online video course on YouTube where you can, you know, go into the blockchain on a deeper level. Uh, there's all types of videos, but I, I, I feel like theirs is pretty good. Some of it's outdated. The information is outdated, but it's a solid foundation for you to understand blockchain technology if you don't already. Uh, in another article, this pisses me off. Mainstream news sucks. Let me say it again. Mainstream news, news sucks, guys. You could read these articles. All articles have a benefit. It's the same thing with uh, all people have a benefit, right? You could listen to a broke person and you could listen to a rich person and come out with something that's actually tangible to come out with a key. Now, with the broke people, you have to listen to them in, in the context of just ignoring the bad things and accepting the good things. And then a rich person, you obviously have to follow uh, their mentorship, right? It's the same thing with articles. Some articles are just really bad and you can kind of see and read between the lines. And some of them actually give you some good insight. In this case, it's, it's kind of drama, okay? It's kind of drama. But I do want to point out that mainstream media, it's just really hard to get to the truth, especially if you don't know what you're doing. If you're not in this market, if you haven't been in financial markets ever, you're going to follow people like this guy right here, Mad Money Jim Kramer, arguably made many people poor with his crypto advice. He was pretty much wrong like nine times out of 10. I don't know this guy. I didn't watch his videos, but I've seen him. Like He's basically a meme in the cryptocurrency community. So if you're someone new and you go and you watch this guy, Mad Money, it's like all these special effects and he looks legit and he's on all these big, credible news outlets. You can get wrecked. You're going to get wrecked. That's partly why I'm making these videos here so I can kind of expose a lot of it. Um, but basically, uh, he, he made his name for having a consistent wrong calls. Um, crypto investors basically trade against him, right? And this is like the most mainstream you can get. So this is a good article to kind of showcase that, again, just because it looks good, just because it has like all of this cinematography and, and it looks like, like really high quality news and, and, and they have a lot of credibility backing it, typically from my experience, that's actually a bad thing, okay? When someone doesn't have something to prove, they're going to wreck people, right? When they have all this credibility and all this help, you know, usually that comes at a cost, right? So a lot of times, again, there's paid influencers that are literally out there to say the wrong things so that they can provide exit liquidity for coin founders and billionaires, okay? You guys know on my channel, I don't get, accept sponsorships. I have no handler. My only handler is God. God tells me what to do. The Holy Spirit tells me what to do uh, you know, with my businesses. So there's no one that can point his finger at Alex and say, hey, say the wrong thing on purpose to make me money because I've never done anything illegal and I don't have ties to these people in this industry, okay? There's a reason why I've created my own businesses and my own subsector of the industry. So I don't have to do things like this and be a paid puppet. It's a thing, guys. It happens in every industry. There's usually one viral paid puppet 
basically to say the wrong thing so that people can make money on the back end. Okay. Don't be that guy. If you want to be an influencer, you could do it the right way. It just takes longer. Okay. Don't, don't be the scapegoat, you know, sell your soul to the devil type of guy. You could, you could do it the right way. And, and also try to identify who these people are and yeah, don't trade with them. Okay. This is also really big news right here. I'm gonna be real with you guys. This is pretty big. Facebook, Instagram, users in the U S can now share Ethereum flow and Polygon NFTs. That's crazy. Now it's crazy for the fact that they've, they've already had the NFT integration. I've seen it on Twitter. You know, that's been happening for a while. What's, what's really crazy to me is they're allowing Polygon NFTs, which has a, the cheap transaction fees and the fast speeds. It's a layer two. That's insane. We have mainstream social medias integrating layer twos into their platforms. Guys, if you understood where I came from, you'd understand how significant this is. Okay, where I came from was basically cryptocurrencies trying to create their own social medias because social media wouldn't accept them. In 2015, 2016, 2017, literally I was involved with multiple social medias like Steam, Steemit, uh, basically cryptocurrency specific social medias because basically you'd get shadow banned on Instagram and Facebook, you get shadow banned on YouTube, right? Not only that, but they wouldn't integrate any of the payment methods. You can't send Bitcoin on, on these social medias. You couldn't send Ethereum. Now we have full on NFT integrations. So I do believe, again, cryptocurrencies and NFTs will come back next cycle. I do believe it's probably one of the greatest times to make money, being that the price of these assets are so cheap right now. And I do believe it's going to be amazing in the future if you have patience. If you don't have patience and you try to sprint out the gate right now and start buying all these NFTs and doing something like, you know, foolish when the Bitcoin having is like a year and a year and a half, two years away, and you're doing these foolish, these foolish uh, trades because you got hype off of an article or whatever the case is, you're going to get burned out quick. You're going to get wrecked. You're going to leave the market because you bought way too much, way too early. Okay. And then you're not going to experience the gains of 2024. Okay. You're not going to experience the full on bull run. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. I, I don't want that to happen to people. So that's why I'm making these videos. Okay. That's why I'm sticking my neck out here. I don't have to make these videos, but I'm making these videos because I want you guys to do it the right way and actually experience the bull run and actually make money. Okay. And that happens with the next Bitcoin halving, which is happening in March, 2024. Not the exact date. We don't know the exact date because it's in block time. It's not in real time. So that can change depending on Bitcoin's lock speeds, but it's happening in 2024. So if you can't be patient enough to wait till then, I'm sorry, you're going to get wrecked. But this also gives me confidence that it will come back. We're having major institutions, huge institutions using cryptocurrency and building right now in cryptocurrency. So this is a thing and you should definitely pay attention to it. Also, let's talk about mainstream media. Let's talk about something that's not cryptocurrency. Let's talk about a little bit of taxes. Obviously, this is a huge number. The tax man is receiving $80 billion, but U.S. small businesses shouldn't worry. I guess that's the title or whatever the case is. Um, basically, uh, there's people going back and forth with the tax uh, regulation and laws. Again, personally, I'm not a CPA. I don't know for sure what is going on or, or you know, how much taxes I have to pay. I hire somebody for that. But like, I just want to make a blanket statement here. If you run a business and you do it the right way with an LLC, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of not illegally invade, but there's legal ways to evade these taxes. Okay. So if you get with a good CPA, none of this affects you. I, I always say this all the time. These things, these arguments, like tax laws, like, like you really don't have any control over it. Like in my personal opinion, I, okay, I, I could be saying something wrong uh, here. I'm not a politician. Even voting, right? Even even voting for these things, like you don't really have control. I've always said uh, in the past that I'll vote once uh, the elections on a blockchain because you know we don't even know if it's rigged or not. Like we just really don't have control. It's the illusion of control. But the problem with like fighting over like taxes and things like this is that it distracts you from the truth. And the truth is you should be building your cash flow, man. Like, why are you worried about taxes, bro? It's going to happen with or without you. There's nothing you could do. It's a big drama fest with these people. Like, it just doesn't matter. There's literally nothing you could do. Just take your licks, hire a good CPA to help you evade a lot of these taxes legally, okay? And focus on your cash flow and investing. I just wanted to point out this article here because, again, there's just so much distractions on the internet, and I'm showing you how to filter through the noise, okay? You should be focusing on your skill set, 
Okay. We talk about, you know, cash flow strategies in the form of short term trading, day trading and swing trading, weeks trade in, in weeks and months, right? This will help you pay your bills or you could do marketing, right? Like I do, like these videos, like this YouTube channel. I also teach that as well. These things are more important than worrying about how much taxes you're going to pay, bro. Like it, it just doesn't make sense. I never worried about taxes. Even when I made my first couple million, I spent, I think like $200,000 in taxes. Okay. And I still don't worry about it. Because at the end of the day, it's a big waste of time. All I, all I want to do is increase my cash flow because we make six figures a month. So I, sometimes more than six figures a month, right? I rather worry about that than how much taxes I'm going to pay for the government because I, I just can't control it. You can't either, okay? So I just wanted to throw that little piece out there so people understand. I guess taxes are increasing. I guess it's going to affect small businesses, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because you can't control it. Uh, I also wanted to throw this article out there. I'm not going to read into it. I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, this 31-year-old turned his side hustle into a $300,000 vending machine business. I only work four hours a week. So again, back to the same topic I just talked about, cash flow. What are you doing? What are you doing to build your cash flow? Amazon business, eBay, what's your forte? They all make money. Let me give you a secret. There's people on the internet marketing saying that their way is the best way because Amazon, FBA, this, this, and that. That's fine. They all make money. Just pick one. They all make money. This guy's making $300,000 a year off vending machines. You can make a million a year off of selling rocks. Okay, I don't recommend it. I suggest you pick a, a, you know, a business strategy that aligns with your interest so you can beat other people and you can do it for fun. But it really doesn't matter. What excuse do you have? There is no excuse. It could take one year. It could take two years for you to actually have a successful business. It could take three years. At the end of the day, that doesn't matter because you're, you're on earth for what, 90 plus years? So if, if you sacrifice three years of your life of hustling, grinding, stopping that Netflix edition, going to the gym, getting your body right, getting your mind right, reading books and, and you know, attacking, right? Executing, actually building that website you want, right? The, the Amazon or whatever, you know, drop shipping, right? I, I used to do this, okay? I used to do e-commerce, okay? Drop shipping, any of that, any of that. Those are good cash flow, right? Marketing, influencer marketing like me, affiliate commission. If you spend your time executing on that for a year, two years, three years, you could literally set yourself up for life. Think about it. I can make a video from anywhere and I'm doing millions of dollars a year from anywhere. I could literally just take a cheap vacation to anywhere I want, pull out the camera and I'm still making money. And it took me three years, uh, less than that. It took me like a year and a half. It took me like a year and a half of consistent effort. And I'm not saying everyone could do it. I'm just telling you that, you know, what I made this channel for was specifically to help people with internet entrepreneurship. With a laptop, an internet connection, and a phone, you can make money. Like, I'm serious. Like, we're making six figures a month. You can make even $10,000 a month. Some of you are making, you know, 30K a year. You can make $10,000, $20,000 a month if you put in the work. I don't know what you want me to tell you. You don't need to shoot for six figures. You could just change your whole life. Like, let me ask you a question. Leave a comment below. If you made ten dollars to $15,000 a month, which is easy, by the way. It's so easy. I could do it by myself. I could do way more. I probably could do like 50K a month by myself. So easy. How would that change your life? Leave a comment below. Would that change your life for the better? Will you, will you have better relationship? Would, would you feel better every day? Would you feel less stressed? Would your investments become better? I, I bet it would. If you had more money to invest, would it become better? Yes. You, you, invest, you would invest with less emotion. Okay. Would you be able to take more vacations? Would you get, you know, be able to buy or rent a better house? Would you get a better car? Are these things not something that you want, right? Would you feel more satisfied? Now, I, I want to be clear here. Um, money's not evil, but I don't, I don't uh, pray to money. I don't, I don't believe in money being a ruler of my life. What I do believe that God is the ruler of my life, and I also believe that God wants us to have abundance and not be lazy. That's, that's what I believe. He doesn't want us to be broke on the street. He doesn't. He doesn't want us to be struggling all the time to, to pay rent and, and, you know, not be able to pay off our debts. He wants us to be happy. So, so you know, you can have both is what I'm saying. And you don't need to be lazy about it. You, you just need to just put into effort and, and have a little bit of faith, right? Have a little bit of faith that he's going to allow you to have abundance in the future and execute, man. Like, it's not that hard, bro. Like, making 10K a month is not that hard. People overcomplicate these things for sure. All right, so let's look at uh, this other article we talked about it in the last video, but let's dive a little bit deeper. Another major brand is discounting its extra inventory. So we're seeing supply chain issues all over. And this is Nike, which is obviously 
one of the biggest shoe brands, uh, clothing brands on planet Earth, if not the biggest. Nike said Thursday, its inventory level soared 65% in North America, its largest market and 44% overall last quarter from a year ago. After navigating limited supply in 2021, Nike is now carrying far too much product, particularly when it comes to clothing. So this is happening a lot, guys. We effectively have a few seasons landing in the marketplace at the same time, creating a glut. Nike CEO John said on a call with one of his analysts, so this is obviously an issue. There's there's going to be a surplus of clothing. People are taking less vacations and buying less like retail because of the market conditions, guys. Look at the price of gas. Look at the price of everything. People are trying to be more conservative now. So you can get cheap clothes, resell them. That could be a thing. I don't know if that's what you want to do. You could do that, save them for the future, resell them. When the market comes back, you could short Nike, uh, you know, literally short the stock price. That could be something you could do. All I know is the S&P 500 and stocks will likely tank in the next three months to a year. Same thing with crypto. The direction is down and we're seeing more and more evidence of that. And you could take advantage by shorting the market and making money off of that. It's a consistent thing that we're doing. And if you don't know how to do it correctly and you're scared and you want guidance, head on over to the fundamental secrets we talked about in the beginning of the video and take advantage of the course. And we kind of just like baby feed you uh, towards a success. Now, obviously there's the advertisement here. It's not letting me read the article, but it's basically talking about carnival stock falling uh, to a 30 year low. This is basically the gist with the entire market guys. I mean, it's hard to say, but it's the truth. Um, you know, again, people are not taking vacations. People are not catching flights. People are not buying retail and, and you know, things that they don't need. Uh, people are trying to be conservative. It's the same thing with billionaires. It's the same thing for regular investors. Everybody's playing it conservative because of the hawkish fed policy, because of what's going on in the federal reserve, but because of what's going on in bank of England, the energy crisis, the war that's going on. Look at the end of the day, Prices are contracting. And it doesn't mean that it's uh, the end of the world, guys. Let me say it again. It doesn't mean that it's at the end of the world. For me, as a person that's educated in finance and I really understand what's going on, all you have to do is know the market direction and you can make a significant amount of money. Market direction and risk management, that's it. Market direction, risk management, cash flow. If you got those three things, it's over. If you have risk management and emotion, emotional control, and, and, and you know, you don't do anything crazy, right? You know the market direction and you have a cash flow mechanism. It's a wrap. You can make money from everywhere, anywhere, no matter what. You can make money from here, there. It does not matter. You can make money. So I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Now, if we look at uh, this bill here, okay, again, like politicians going back and forth on if they should be able to trade a stock. This is the world we live in. I'm not going to dive into it too much. You can go read the bill for yourself. This is the official bill right here. It would take a lawyer to really dissect the verbiage in this article here. But the gist is, you know, we do have a back and forth from the Democratic Party, basically saying they're trying to pass a bill uh, basically to allow, uh, you know, politicians to have more freedom to trade stocks. Look, at the end of the day, I don't I don't know the truth. I don't know the answer. Can a politician that, you know, basically has control over regulation you know, be able to trade a stock. We've seen them take advantage of it before, right? We've seen them take advantage of it over and over again. Do, should they have the power to be able to trade that stock and have, you know, control over the, the actual stock regulation and laws? If you ask me personally, I would say no. You know, does that limit them? Yes. Uh, they make money in other ways. Like, you know, politicians make so much money, so much money uh, through donations. They make millions of dollars. So do I, do I care? No, I don't care. The discipline to not do these things, uh, it, it just comes with it. It just comes with it. If you really want to control things, then you can't invest in the things you can't, you control. It just doesn't make sense to me, uh, you know, the, why they, they're allowed to do this in the first place, but I guess they're going back and forth, uh, trying to figure out, you know, who's right and who's wrong or whatever the case is, which brings me to my last article here, Coinbase, Coinbase is investigating problems with payments from U.S. banks. The cryptocurrency exchange basically had issues with U.S. banks, people withdrawing their money from Coinbase. Coinbase has been going through a lot of crazy regulation stuff. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing through the entire crypto industry and every centralized exchange, but they have been specifically getting hit a lot. Uh, and I'm guessing it's because of their stock price. I'm guessing because they're just like the top dog and, and you know, the centralized exchange uh, place. And that's usually what happens to the number one person and then one person gets hit. Um, you know, I do think they're going to fix the withdrawals uh, for sure. Uh, but this is a problem with centralized exchanges. This is why I, I diversify centralized exchange and decentralized exchanges. Um, 
specifically because they go down. You can't withdraw your money. I have multiple accounts, guys. People always ask me, what's the best exchange to trade? I use multiple, man. I use FTX exchange. I use KuCoin, Uniswap. I use Coinbase. I use all of them because if one goes down, I can send my money to the other and I can trade there. But that's pretty much the news here. I did want to go over all of these from the lens of someone that's been doing this for a very long time. Please don't get wrecked by the mainstream media. Let's not do that. Please, let's, let's have a discipline and understanding that they make money. Uh, by promoting articles. That's how they do it. It's called marketing. Uh, it's not evil. Uh, it's just the way it works. Um, and people just that don't understand are the ones that get wrecked. So as long as you have an understanding of what's going on, you should be okay uh, and be able to read through the lines. And I'm going to help you with that on this channel. So of course, if you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism, subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.